Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. Today's project was born of necessity. I needed a portable way to play music fairly loud, and I needed it in a hurry. See, I work at a preschool, and we were having an outdoor field day to celebrate the end of the school year. And we needed something to play tunes on for a little game called Musical Chairs. And maybe you remember it. So I came up with this thing. It's not pretty, but it is very functional, and it's able to get nice and loud without any trouble whatsoever. Oh, and since I didn't have access to electricity, it also needed to be battery powered. So let me show you how I made it. The enclosure is pretty simple. It's just an eight inch by eight inch box about 42 inches high. I used three quarter inch particle board because I had a lot of that laying around, but MDF or plywood, that would be fine too. I don't seem to have any footage of myself cutting the main panels, but here they are on the workbench cut to size two at eight inches wide and two at six and a half inches wide to arrive at roughly an eight inch square shape that's 42 inches long. I'm gonna to confess to you right now that I didn't even model this enclosure. So I've used a speaker driver before in several other projects and has a pretty stiff suspension and doesn't seem to mind whatever kind of box it lives in. The driver is a five inch sodium buyout speaker and I'm setting it up for six on one side and six on the other 90 degree side for a decent sound dispersion. So I basically just went as small as I could without the frames of the speaker drivers physically hitting each other inside the cabinet. Pretty low tech, right? Well, keep in mind, I only had a little over a week to pull this whole thing off. You can't have musical chairs without music, right? I had to add two layers of one quarter inch MDF to the two sides with the speakers so that the grill cloth wouldn't be touching the speaker surrounds. Yeah, I could have machined a one quarter inch deep opening in the speaker panels, but this is a lot easier to do in my opinion. And all this is really here for is to keep the cloth from contacting the speaker surround. I was able to apply a one quarter inch round over to the long sides of the cabinet. I think a half inch round over probably would have been preferable, but I wanted to try out my new Harbor Freight Tools cordless router. And that takes a one quarter inch shaft and I didn't have any half inch round over bits with a quarter inch shaft. So that's why I went with the quarter inch round over bit. Not that you needed to know that, but more on the Harbor Freight Tools angle in a minute. I just painted the whole thing black with some painter's touch satin black latex from Rust-Oleum. It's easy to just roll on with one thick coat and then it's done. It even sticks just fine to MDF end grain, which is usually a pain. So for that reason, it's my go-to for quick and easy coverage of less important projects. So you have to think about how to wire 12 speakers to an amplifier. You can't just stick all the positives and negatives to the left side and the right side. Now these drivers are 8 ohms each, and the amplifier that I initially chose was fine with 4 ohm loads, so per side I decided to go with 2 banks of 3 drivers. 3 8 ohm drivers in parallel comes to around 2.66 ohms. Then 2 banks of drivers at 2.66 ohms run in series works out to around 5.3 ohms. Now that's plenty safe impedance wise, it won't tax the amplifier too much, but should yield enough output to make sure the kiddos can hear the music fine. I tested the polarity of the drivers after hooking it up just to make sure I wired things up correctly. And then I installed the push terminal on the top of the cabinet. Since this thing will be used where there are young kids, I wanted to protect the drivers. So instead of just using grow cloth, I employed a trick that I've used before. Two layers of protection for the drivers. A grow cloth on the outside and a window screen material on the inside. The window screen really protects the drivers from harder impacts, where the grill cloth kind of just hides them from view. It's a good combination and almost guarantees that the drivers will be protected. I used window screen spline pressed into a groove that I machined into the cabinets to secure the screen and cloth material in one operation. Pretty easy, really. The hardest part's getting the tension on the material right since it curves around the box. At this point, I hadn't fully decided what to do with the music player and battery on the top of the box. So, like I said, I was pressed for time, so I sort of threw together the hardware on the top of this thing just to get it functional, figuring I'd go back later and tidy things up a bit. So here you can see where I'm getting the power from. It's a 20 volt, five amp hour Hercules power tool battery from Harbor Freight Tools. So I do own a few different makes of cordless power tools, but this is the largest capacity small power tool battery that I own. And I thought it would be cool to try and use this to power my column speaker project. So looking on the jungle site, I found a 3D printed battery adapter for this very battery with nice thick leads. So I popped on that and boom, I had my power source. Now, here's where I kind of goofed. 
A few videos ago, I reviewed this little all-in-one music player and amplifier. And I gave it a thumbs down because of, well, noise mostly. Actually, it wasn't great all around, but since I already had it, and during testing, it seemed to work just fine with the setup, I made a little faceplate to mount it in, and I went with it. And I'll let the big guy explain what happened next. No bueno. This thing let me down. I tried this unit out after I finished it for several hours at home, a couple hours downstairs, a good hour or two upstairs. It worked fine, it had good battery life. And when I got it to our field day at school, after 20 minutes or so, it did this. <laughs> Now, I don't know if you can hear exactly what's going on. There's a lot of noise and kids shouting and screaming and having a good time and stuff. But what it's basically doing is every second or so, every second and a half, it's cutting off just for a split second. And that's no good. I was, I was severely disappointed. Um, I was really upset and mad and angry. Like I said, I tried this thing at home for hours and it worked fine. But when I get it out in the field and actually comes time to, for it to perform, it let me down. Um, and I, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what the problem was. I had SD card in playing music. I had a um, USB uh, jump drive in there playing music. I had the same music on both of them. I said, let me just have a backup just in case, in case someone bumps into this and it breaks or something. And then I've got the, the, the SD card, micro SD card in there. Both had the same music on it. I switched from one to the other. It was still doing the same thing. Uh, basically every second or two, it would just stop for a split second. Just, just enough to be really super annoying. And if you're playing musical chairs, you can't have the music stopping every couple of seconds. It confuses the kids. So I was so mad. But um, I actually, after about 30 minutes or so of it acting up, I'm like, I was so angry. Let me tell you, I was, I was mad. This is the truth. I said, Lord, I don't want everyone to be disappointed from something that I made screwing up. So please just let this thing work. And the truth is, for the last 30 minutes we were out there, it worked fine. And the next group that went out there in the afternoon, it worked fine. They said they didn't have a single problem with it. Um, but this thing let me down, and I'm very thankful that it did work. Thank you, Lord. But I got to get to the bottom of this. This thing is not is not good. Um, I didn't know what it could be. I switched between the SD card and the USB. Did the same thing. Um, I covered up the little infrared receiver thinking maybe it's getting pause signals from the sun or something like that. I've had actually direct sunlight cause interference with these things and cause it to act funny. I put tape over that and it didn't change anything. Uh, I thought maybe the battery's getting low. It hasn't been running that long, but no, well, all four lights, it, it's not that. Um, I didn't know what it was. I still don't know what it is exactly. My suspicion is that since the power lines that run to this thing, this thing was only like five or six dollars. I already reviewed it and I said don't buy it, but since I had it, I figured I might as well use it for a kid's thing, it probably would be fine. And like I said, I tested it for, for hours and it worked, but the, the two power leads that go to this that connect to it are so incredibly thin, the copper is so incredibly thin. I don't even know if it's in the 20 gauge area, it's probably in the 30 gauge area. It's like, seriously, like half a dozen strands of hair is all the copper that's in that. I had a tough time stripping it. I had to strip the wires a couple times to get enough I could barely see it too. I suspect maybe that's what it was. Maybe out of the four or five lines that were in there, I accidentally snipped a couple of them when I was, you know, stripping the, the insulation off. Maybe some of them were making contact and then they stopped making contact and that's why it started going up. I really don't know, but that this thing's a mess. <clears throat> don't buy it and I'm taking this thing out of here and what I'm gonna put in its place is a half decent one of these suckers, which I reviewed as Bigger Brother, year or two ago. Um, this thing's actually nice. This thing, uh, preamp unit, MP3 player, Bluetooth, all in one, was like $5. This thing is like $12 or $14, and it's just a preamp. But this is a decent quality unit. And the connections that they, they give you in the back, the cords and stuff, the decent size, they're not like, I won't even have to trim this one or, or splice into it. I can connect it directly into this amp, which is what I'm gonna use to get this one from Parts Express. It advertises 50 watts per channel, Probably at four ohms with what, 20 volts that I get from this battery, you probably get, I don't know, a good 20, 22 watts, 23 watts, something like that per channel. But that's 
plenty for these speakers. That'll actually do the job just fine because this thing wasn't putting out quite that much wattage. So that's my plan. I'm going to redo this thing, tear this out. It worked and thank God it got me through the day. Um, but this thing's junk. Don't buy it. Please don't buy it. And I'm going to redo this. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take this off, make a little topper for this. This was just sort of temporary just to get me through this thing because I sort of ran out of time. I designed this thing just for this field day once I figured out what we were doing and our activities were going to be. But anyway, I'm going to re tear this off and do a new part on the top and that's what I'm going to do now. I'll be wearing a different shirt because I'm not doing it tonight, but that's what you're going to see. And it's still working more or less. I have been able to duplicate the issue, although I'm not exactly sure what it is. At this point, I think it's most likely due to vibrations from the sound output jiggling something inside the board that caused it to cut out on the punchier bass notes. It happened worse when it was louder rather than quieter, so that's why I sort of think that. Basically just bad build quality, but whatever the reason, I'm done with this thing. I'm not taking a chance on this turd anymore. Besides, I think I can make the speaker sound better. So, like the big guy said, we're going with this setup. To keep things tidy, I went with this hinge top type of thing. I made the top out of one quarter inch MDF, which I mitered the corners on. The very top is made of one quarter inch MDF as well. It's just a cover, it doesn't need to be too thick. I had to be careful cutting out the opening for the preamp. The mounting holes and the opening are uncomfortably close to each other. After painting it black, I threw a few cheapy hinges on it and since the screws were touched too long, I just glooped some black hot glue on it to cover the sharp pointy bits. Then, since I didn't have any standoffs for the import handy, and the hot glue gun was already percolating, I just glumped a few blobs onto the back side of the amp board next to the mounting holes to serve as standoffs. Dang, you know, hot glue is almost as handy as duct tape. Now to wire everything up, connect the power switch, and tidy things up a bit. The battery and amp all fit underneath, and the preamp mounts inside, facing out. The amplifier is just fine with the 20 volts that the battery provides. It can handle up to 24 volts, but the preamp needs 12 volts. So I have to reduce that voltage somehow. Now, there are several ways of doing that, but the way that I like best is with an isolated DC to DC transformer, which also has the added benefit of eliminating a potential source of noise when you use one power source to power an amp and a separate preamplifier. That's because with an isolated DC to DC transformer, there is no direct electrical connection between the battery and the 12 volt output that's sent to the preamp. As its name implies, the voltage reduction is done with the transformer, or two adjacent coils of wire. These things are also pretty small, so that's good too. They're more expensive than a cheapy buck converter though, but in this case, I think it's worth it. So getting this thing all hooked up and running some music through it, I was able to get just about 100 decibels out of it. That's not bad for such a portable and cheap to build setup. I'm not sure how familiar you are with what 100 decibel sounds like, but a sound level of 100 decibels is considered very loud. At four feet away, you can feel it in your chest. And it stays pretty clean with this new amp up to maybe 95% of its available output. Yeah, I know I left a few details out. Let me fill this in for you now. The base is three layers of three quarter inch particle board, about 15 and a half inches wide. Wanting to make it as easy to move as possible, not just for me, but possibly others who might use it, I purchased these cool angle wheel thingies from the jungle site and slapped them on. Along with this handle to grab and guide it as we're rolling along. I chose to make this music player mostly because of the super inexpensive buyout drivers that I already had on hand. That made building this thing pretty cheap to do. And if I had to pony up for $100 or so worth of drivers for this thing, I doubt I would have even built it. Would have went with something retail or commercial, but I'm glad I did design this because now, anytime I need a way to play music outside or anywhere really loudly, since it's not too heavy, I can just throw this in the back of the car and have some really loud tunes, whether there's power available or not. Well, that's it for this one, but hey, before you click off, 
if you think this video deserves any of that stuff down there, I'd really appreciate it. It's tough spending a few weeks making a video only to have a few hundred people watch it. You know what I mean? Anyway, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.